What? Bill? Hey there, fellow maker. Welcome down to my shop. I'm Bill, and today I'm going to knock out a cyberpunk costume in just one day. But I did spend a little time yesterday getting prepared so that I knew I'd be able to get everything done today. So here's what we have so far. We went thrift store shopping. Sort of the showcase piece for this costume will be a really cool looking jacket. And we hit the jackpot with this fella here. This is a leather jacket. It's got a nice dark red color. It's got tons of texture that we can play with and add accents to. This was like $18. Believe it or not, I found it in the women's section. Ladies get all the coolest stuff. All the men's jackets are really boring. So this one is fantastic, fits me perfectly. I got pants, I got a belt. I grabbed some gloves that I'm gonna modify from the hardware store and I have a shirt. Plus, I went and came up with a list of everything I want to accomplish today. I prioritized all of it so that I can make sure I get it all done in a very short amount of time. Let's get started with number one. I want to do some cybernetic implants on my face, so I'm going to model those because they need to get under silicone so we can mold and cast copies later today. Let's get started. I'm starting with some styrene plastic for these and they're going to be like a facial thing here and I'm thinking hexagons because everything in the future is hexagons. I'm just going to cut out a couple different layers of styrene and glue them together until they look right. The circle there. It does kind of look like Pac-Man, doesn't it? A walk, a walk, a walk, a walk, a walk. We'll just add some lines there so it looks cool. Maybe a similar line over here. Yeah. All right, let's go cut this stuff out. Let's see how it looks. So this is like a, a prosthetic that would go like on my temple there. What do you think, Brett? Good size? Do you think it'll work? All right, let's mold it. Hello. While that mold is curing, I can work on another part. This shirt is a pretty basic looking black shirt. It's got a nice texture on it. I want it to stand out a little more, so I'm gonna add a little bit of paint to texture this, and then we'll do a logo. But for the texture, I've got a piece of upholstery foam here that's kind of gnarly and ripped up, and I have some acrylic paints, and I mix a little bit of fabric medium in there to help the acrylic paint on this fabric. And I'm just randomly tamping down this texture pattern. This will dry a little bit darker, so it won't be quite so apparent, but this will help break up just that flat black on my middle bits. Cool. Stencil, awesome. So I designed this little logo for the front of my shirt and cut it out on the vinyl cutter. Now I'm removing everything that I want to be painted. Same thing with the exclamation point. And then I'm gonna cover this with some transfer tape so that we can move it over to our shirt. I'm gonna put the stencil on now. I can peel the backing paper off and then line it up. Now, I could make this off center and weird looking on purpose, or I could try and center it. I'm gonna try and center it. There we go. I'm gonna press it down and peel off the transfer tape. Oh, that looks okay. Okay, it's not dry yet, but I want to peel it off to see how it looks. That looks great. 
Now I can hang this shirt up and let it dry for the rest of today while I work on the next part. So my shirt's drying, my silicone is curing, and I wanna have a robot hand. I'm gonna have two. One of them is gonna be done with makeup, and the other one is gonna have prosthetics, like moving parts on it. For that one, I'm gonna start with this glove I got at the hardware store. But the first thing I wanna do is remove all of the logos and stuff, so I have a nice clean look on it. So, seam ripper time. So removing this actually took the Velcro part off and I need it to close it. So I took this off of the logo part and just stitched it on with the sewing machine. So now I can snug this whole thing on and Velcro it up. It's looking pretty good so far. I just don't like this. Um, I'll have to figure out a way to get rid of that. But in general, I'm happy with this glove. I'm gonna modify it a little bit. The first thing will be the color. The red's a little bright for my taste, so I'm just gonna use some acrylic paints and darken it a little bit uh, and then let that dry. That's a lot nicer. While that's drying, we can go see if our mold is cured. The mold is fully cured. This is Mold Star 20T. It cures in about 30 minutes, which is why I used it. If I peel it off, you can see we have a mold. I'm gonna cast apart immediately because I'm impatient. I'm gonna cold cast it though, so I got a little bit of aluminum powder here. Careful not to breathe any of this in. And I'm just coating the inside of that mold with aluminum powder. And I really do need just the tiniest amount. So this is Onyx Fast. It's a urethane resin. It cures really fast and it cures dark black. That's what we're gonna use. It's hard to mix up a small amount of this. So I mixed up way more than I needed. That's gonna go in our mold. Just the tiniest amount. Just like that. And I have some other small molds with like nuts and bolts and stuff that I'm gonna fill up for use with other projects. This is a great way to use extra silicone to make the molds and extra resin to cast some spare parts. The resin is fully cured. I can pop my little piece out. Boop. Now this has metal powder in it so I can buff it with a piece of steel wool and it'll look all nice and shiny. Okay, it's time to make my robot hand glove thing. It's a robotic enhancement, it's not a replacement for a robot hand. One of the screenshots I saw for the new Cyberpunk game, the guy had like just an exoskeleton on a pair of his fingers, so I think that's what I wanna do. Here's my thought, it needs to bend and flex. So for that, I have zip ties, which are nice and flexible. I believe these are made of nylon. And then I've just got some plastic. This is uh, Sintra or PVC foam. And I'm gonna use that to make the sort of decorative elements. And then to attach it, I have thread. I figure I can just attach the flexible part to the glove so that it bends and works with my joints. We'll see how it turns out. So what I'm thinking is the, uh, the zip tie will be attached like at the knuckle up top here and the knuckle in the front here. And then when I straighten my finger, the slack will create that peak. So those will go there, and I think and I can actually zip tie these to the zip tie. These are gonna be some notches for our zip ties. Pew. All right, to attach this to the zip tie, I'm gonna use another zip tie. Lose the top. Sorry, Britt, I came right at you. <laughs> I'm gonna make these oppose one another, so this one's gonna go in the other direction. Shoot this away from the camera person. Bing. That almost went in my drink, all right. I have more than I need here, so I can cut that shorter. And then to attach it to the glove, I wanna stitch it, so I need a hole in there, and I have my leather punch. There we go, got a hole through that, and now I can sew it to my glove. So that'll go there, and this one will go up there. I need to sew through the cloth, but this rubber thing's in the way, so I'm gonna use my hole punch to hopefully punch a hole only through the rubber. There we go. My sewing does not overwhelm me <laughs> with an abundance of durability. So I'm just gonna super glue the knot there so that it can't come undone. A little accelerant, boop. Ugh. There's my glove, still fits. I have robot fingers. <laughs> That's pretty cool. 
So I'm also gonna, I'm gonna cut the fingers off here and I might even cut the thumb off and that would let me use my phone, at least with my thumb. The lines on the knuckle here, I'm gonna use that as my sort of cutoff point and I'm just gonna saw through these things. One thing you gotta be careful of is when you just cut through a garment like that, the thread is going to start to unravel. And again, like I did with my stitching, I can super glue all those to make sure they don't come apart. Boop. Boop. You can see I tried it, the glove on and it pulled apart right there, so I'm just gonna make sure that there's plenty of super glue to hold that together. Uh, I could go in with a needle and thread and stitch it. Uh, in fact, I'll do that if necessary, but if I can get it to stay with super glue, then that's what I'm gonna do so I can move on to the next thing. It's not gonna split anymore, so that's good. So this is the fingertip, and we're gonna use the cloth from this to cover this logo. There we go. Yeah, I can go right over that, that's fantastic. That little piece of cloth to cover the logo, I'm just gonna use a little barge to attach it. So I'm just gonna brush a tiny bit on the glove and then a tiny bit on that piece and I can press them together. Our contacts met has had about five minutes to dry and now I can tack it down. There we go, no more logo. I pulled a quick pattern using just some uh, masking tape off of my glove and I wanna make a part that covers the back of the hand but then overlaps the wrist a tiny bit. So this is the basic pattern that I'll use to cut my piece out of foam. So that would be like that. I think that's all right. Yep. Recently started using these white markers here to draw in foam and they are fantastic. Silver Sharpies are pretty good, but I've noticed that they wear out really easily. These seem to last pretty long. We will we'll of course have links down in the description if you wanna grab some for yourself. Now I'm actually gonna cut this on the bandsaw so I can put a nice bevel on these parts. Okay, I wanna cut some lines in it to match these lines here. These lines here, I'm just gonna score with a really sharp knife, so I'm not cutting all the way through. These ones, I still have this really sharp knife, but I wanna add like a V, like that, and like that. And when I pull this piece out, there's a nice V groove there. Oak. These are all scored now. I can hit it with this heat gun and open them up. To attach this to my glove, I'm gonna use some more barge. Here we go, our glue is no longer sticky. You do wanna be really careful about your placement because once this goes down, that's pretty much it. Making sure it's exactly where I want it to go. And then you can press it really hard and it will stay forever. Just add some gray and then I'm gonna dry brush some silver on everything to make it look a little more metallic. Got some silver acrylic paint here and a cheap brush to do a little bit of dry brushing so that this reads a little bit more as metallic. You can see how just those bits of kind of metallic looking scratches add a lot to that. I love that so much. Try it out, see how it looks. That looks okay. <laughs> I like that this no longer has a nice straight edge there. Um, I might add something to keep it laying flat. We'll see if I have time to do that later, but let's move on to the next step, which is the jacket. I have big plans for this jacket. We can paint directly on it using our leather paints. And uh, let's see, we've got some patches to add. These aren't cyberpunk specific patches. They're just cool patches that I have. This one's from Weta Workshop. This is from my friend Jeff the Star Shipwright, and then my buddy Sanit has a really cool patch right here. These may not all go on the jacket, but I'd like to add at least one. Maybe the wings and sword for the props department at Weta Workshop. I wanna paint on here. I think I'm gonna fill in this chevron. I wanna fill it in with some bronze paint here. Boop. Yeah. You know what, I don't think I needed this tape. <laughs> While I'm working on that, I'm gonna try a little experiment with time travel and see what the future has to offer. Bloop, 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 bloop. Ugh, holy crap! I went forward uh, only four days, but that's because in four days is Black Friday, and it turns out we're having a sale on our website. So we're gonna have 
deals on our books, both printed and digital. Plus, we have new products in the store. We also have a bunch of shirts and merch, which are fantastic, if you ask me. Plus, some new stuff nobody's even seen before. That's all you get. You'll see it on Friday when we launch everything. We're gonna have sales on stuff all the way from Friday to Monday. Wanna head on over to punishpops.com to join in on the fun. Grab something for yourself, grab a bunch of stuff for yourself and get something for the cosplayer in your life. Especially if you have anyone who's looking to get into this and they don't know where to start. I'll give you a hint, this one's particularly good. Great, you know everything that's going on. I'm gonna head back there and see what else I can get. I'll see you later. These foam pieces are gonna go on my leather jacket, a little bit of a extra bit of detail. Uh, I do wanna score some lines in here though, so I'm just using the lines on the mat to determine where those should go. And then I'm gonna use a speed square so that I can get a nice 90 degree cut that scores most of, but not all the way through the foam. And then I can just go down inch by inch, score a bunch of lines. I wanna add a little more detail, so I took the tip of this rotary bit and slid it off a little there, and I can spin it and press it in. Look at that. Just like on our other foam bits, I'm gonna heat gun these to open them up, but I can also form it around the shoulder, which is where these are gonna live. There we go, that'll go over the shoulder. Just like on our glove, I'm doing a little bit of dry brushing. Now this is directly on the foam because I don't have time to prime or seal this foam. Uh, it'll look just fine the way it is. It just won't be a terribly durable finish. But what's important is that this way is really fast. Bloop, bloop, bloop. So these parts, like I said, will go over the shoulder. Uh, I think I can just glue it straight down to the leather using contact cement, which means I need to brush this on both the back of the foam and on my jacket. And I don't wanna mess that up. <laughs> nice. And stuck down, and then that can go over. Snap. This is a foam dowel. I'm gonna bevel the ends of it and then cut some slices off to make those sort of chamfered circled pieces that all of the characters in uh, Steampunk 2077 seem to have. Steampunk? Steampunk, did I say Steampunk? Steampunk 2077, the new game, the hot new game coming from CD Projekt Red. It would be really great if they made a Steampunk game. Anyway. Now I can zip off the part I just chamfered using my bandsaw. This is a patch that I want to put on my jacket and I think I'm gonna glue it down, but I'm putting a double-sided tape on the back of it first so I can stick it down to the jacket and figure out where it needs to go and then trace around it so I know where to brush all my glue. Now I can peel the backing off. One thing's for sure, I'm gonna to have to weather this. It's a little too clean. That's pretty cool. This is the dirty red, dark red water that I used on the glove to darken it. And I wanna darken this a lot. That's not too bad. This is mostly water, so this is probably gonna dry lighter. We'll find out. The good news is it isn't like crazy bright white anymore. Awesome. I like for my cyberpunk character to have like a necklace or some kind of jewelry. So we found some just bits and bobs. These I believe are actually part of an old spray gun that I totally bricked uh, with a, a catalyzed filler primer. But I kept these parts and I'm gonna drill out some holes and see if I can attach all these together in a way that looks like a cool pendant. Let's see, great. So I wanna drill a hole through here and then thread this through the other side there, which means I need to know what this thread is. So I've got these thread checkers. I don't know if this is metric or imperial, so we'll try both. 
but you basically go down the line until it fits like that and then you go over here and see if the thread works that doesn't quite work that doesn't quite work so this might be metric if we go over here I'm gonna guess like three millimeter and then if I go over here give it a shot that's it right there so this thread is a three millimeter thread so I need to drill the appropriate size hole and then go grab a three millimeter tap piece is all chucked up here so I can drill a hole through it I want to get it started with this center punch a little dab will do you boop keep everything all lubricated Oop, there we go, right through. I'm actually gonna drill the same hole in the opposing side. So these two holes line up, which is great, and one of them needs to get tapped. And for that, I have a three millimeter tap. Cool. Does it fit? It does! Yeah! Here's how it's gonna go together, I think. This should go through there. That should go through there. And then this should screw into there. And it seems to be working! Like that. I made a little pendant. Just attach some cord to this and I got myself a sweet necklace. This here is just some elastic cord and I'm gonna use that to uh, wear my super fancy necklace so this can get cinched up like that there that looks really cool i'll just wrap some wire or other string around this part here to hold it together and it looks all right -da 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 -da. one of the last bits of detail uh, i've got my pants here these are from a thrift store and they're already kind of pre-weathered which is nice they look really good i got a patch I want to throw on there just to make it look more interesting. Um, getting a little late in the day for our one day build, so I don't think I'm gonna do much to my pants. I wanna stitch this on, uh, but to place it, I got more of my double-sided tape here, like so. I can center this where I want it to go on this pocket and then stick it down. Now it's not permanently down, but it's on enough that as I stitch, it's not gonna move or rotate. One of the last pieces that I have for the costume is a belt. This is a pouch for a camera flash. I added an extended uh, thing on the back of it years ago, but it'll fit on this belt, no problem. I figured it'd be a nice addition to the costume, but also I can keep stuff in there. Uh, but it's too black, it's too clean. So I've got more of my silver paint and I'm just gonna kiss the edges with a little bit to add just a tiny bit of contrast. So this is the little bit of dry brushing we did. You can see the back of it is still clean. So there isn't a huge difference, but this does break it up. It does accent the texture a little bit. And I think that's gonna help our costume look a little bit more cohesive. That is all of the, the sort of minimum things I wanted to accomplish today. Uh, it's getting dark out. Our one day is almost over. So I think I'm gonna settle for what we have done already. Got my jacket, my jewelry, pants, belt, shirt. Got some boots to throw on. I got some makeup to put on. I've got some things to stick to my face. Uh, I should probably do my hair and maybe put in my contact lenses. But other than that, my cyberpunk costume is complete. Let's see how it looks all together.
And there it is, my super quick and easy cyberpunk themed costume. Just about everything here was sourced from the thrift store, especially this sweet jacket. In fact, this was the big find of the day. You might be wondering what that noise was. <laughs> Ta-da! You also might be noticing what this is. This was the prop that I made for this, and you'll see that in next week's video. This was super fun to put together, really quick. Um, I've never done anything with uh, my own makeup before, so the little lines on my face were kind of cool and fun to experiment with. Uh, I also really enjoyed the little facial prosthetics. I used Prosade to stick those on my face. I also have Prosade Remover so that I can get them off. You also noticed that I made a cool hat, but it wasn't in this video. We actually built that over on our live stream on twitch.tv slash punished props. We usually stream over there Wednesdays at like 2 p.m. Pacific. So if you wanna catch us in the shop, head on over there and give us a follow. That's everything that I've got for you today in my super cool cyberpunk build. If you have any questions about this one, leave it down in the comments down below. And as a reminder, we've got a huge sale coming out this weekend for Black Friday, and you don't want to miss it. Everything over at PunishProps.com will be heavily discounted. So head on over there on Friday to grab some fantastic deals on prop and costume making stuff. Thanks again so much for hanging out, and I'll catch you in the next build. This one. <laughs> Let's get... <laughs> now I can zip off the part I just chamfered using my belt sander. <laughs> belt sander. <laughs> There's so much glitter right here. So much glitter. What could that have been from? April. Bloop. Bloop. This is going in the bloopers, isn't it? Bloop.